This lecture will examine the pathophysiology of mitral valve stenosis. At this time, I'd like to describe for you the changes that occur in left ventricular function and left atrial function when, when there is mitral valve stenosis. Normally, when the left ventricle fills from, with blood from the left atrium, during diastole, the pressure gradient across the mitral valve is very, very negligible. So I'm showing here that a normal left atrial pressure might be 10, and the end diastolic pressure in the left ventricle might also be 10. However, with mitral valve stenosis, when you have a narrowing of this mitral valve so that the orifice area is greatly reduced, then we may find a situation where left atrial pressure becomes very high, 25 in this example, but even despite this very high pressure, blood still has difficulty in moving across that valve and filling the left ventricle. So left ventricular end diastolic volume and left ventricular end diastolic pressure may be reduced. When this occurs, the ventricle will not contract as forcefully, so its peak systolic pressure might also be reduced. So I'm showing it to be about 115 here, and that would lead to a reduction in aortic systolic pressure. So overall, this is what we will see then to summarize with mitral valve stenosis. We're going to have an increase in left atrial pressure and the pressure gradient across that valve during diastole due to the high resistance of that valve. We will have a decrease in diastolic pressure and diastolic volume. We also will see associated with this a left atrial hypertrophy because that left atrium is now having to generate much higher pressures in order to move blood across that mitral valve and fill the left ventricle. Well, let's now look at the pressure and volume changes in the heart sounds. So the, atria, the aortic pressure and left ventricular pressure tracings look pretty normal. They might be depressed a little bit if the cardiac output is reduced, but otherwise they look pretty normal. But what really stands out here with mitral valve stenosis is that during diastole, so this is this is diastole still for the ventricle, and this is diastole in the portion of diastole where the ventricle is filling. So whenever the ventricle is filling with blood from the left atrium, there is now a pressure difference between the left atrial pressure and the ventricular pressure. Normally these two lines, the dotted line and the solid black line, are sitting on top of each other during diastolic filling. But now we see this gray zone, which represents the pressure gradient across that valve. In terms of the heart sounds, we will find that the murmur is occurring during diastole. So here is S2. This is where the aortic valve closes. And a little bit of time after that, once, once the mitral valve opens and begins filling the left ventricle, because of that narrowed opening, we have a high velocity of flow. We will have turbulence, and very rapidly, we're going to get a loud sound of this diastolic murmur occurring. And the intensity is greatest shortly after the valve opens because that's where we have the greatest pressure gradient between the left atrium and the ventricle. And then over time, as the left ventricle fills with blood, the velocity of inflow decreases as you get into the reduced filling phase, and so the murmur will become less intense. And then you may again hear a pre-systolic accentuation of the murmur, because at this point is where the A wave occurs, atrial contraction, and you get an additional amount of blood going into the ventricle, and that may generate this pre-systolic accentuation. If we look at the pressure volume loops, a normal loop is depicted here with a dotted line. And the main difference that you find with mitral stenosis is that the ventricle just doesn't fill to the same end diastolic volume because you have a high resistance to flow across the valve. And so the end diastolic volume will be reduced and therefore you're falling on the same filling curve 
And so the end diastolic pressure will also be reduced compared to what it was uh, in a normal loop. And the valve may open at a lower pressure if the aortic pressure is reduced. And when that occurs, you get our normal systolic ejection and then isovolumetric uh, relaxation occur and then you would get filling uh, of the left ventricle. I'm depicting here a small decrease in, in systolic volume and uh, that is just simply a result of having a reduced end diastolic volume and if you have reduced end diastolic volume and then coupled in this example with a small reduction in aortic pressure that would lead to a, a decrease in afterload and so I'm just depicting a small decrease in that systolic volume but the net effect is that the width of the pressure volume loop is greatly reduced and therefore the stroke volume is reduced. So we can summarize uh, these in this slide. Mitral stenosis is associated with the following an increase in pressure gradient across the mitral valve during diastolic filling. Secondly, we will hear a diastolic murmur, often with an opening snap. There will be reduced left ventricular filling, in other words, a decrease in diastolic volume and a decrease in stroke volume because of the reduced filling. So you're really affecting the Frank Starling relationship. If you fill the heart with less blood, it doesn't contract as forcefully or as rapidly. Because we're not ejecting as much stroke volume, we're going to find that there is an increase in left atrial pressure as, as blood backs up into the left atrium and also the fact that the left atrium has to increase its pressure to very high levels in order to eject blood across that stenotic valve. So we can have a large increase in pulmonary capillary wedge pressures and enlarged left atrium which can lead to pulmonary edema and atrial fibrillation. And the atrial fibrillation can result because when you take this left atrium and you are stretching it out and enlarging it because of these high pressures within, there, that can trigger um, changes in the ionic channel function within the, within the left atrium and this can lead to atrial fibrillation.